Oh, Tilly, are you there? I need to speak to you pronto. What's your problem, huh? Did you actually make it home in one piece or not? What are you up to? Don't you know how worried you've made everyone feel today? You just leave the house crying without stating you were walking out on us. That's not typical behavior. Are you seriously kidding me right now, Donna? How dare you say something like that to me? How could you be so ignorant, huh? You've got some nerve messaging me, yeah? Oh my, I wasn't expecting this kind of response from you. Look, I was just worried about you and your whereabouts, that's all. Is it such a big deal? How can you say something so harsh to your dear old mother-in-law, huh? I'm actually trying to show that I care, isn't that obvious? Why must you be so rude to me? You know what, I guess it's because lower class people like you are not very disciplined at all when it comes to manners or anything like that. <laughs> Look, this is what I'm trying to point out. The way you interact with me. Like I'm less than a human being. What's with that, Donna? Why must you act this way towards me? Why must you belittle me right when I'm trying to meet you just before I marry your son? I'm already anxious enough as it is and you're just making me feel worse. Hey, come on now, there's no need to speak to me like that. What are you seriously angry about, huh? Did you really think that I'd approve this marriage? Do you think that just because you went running out the door crying that I'm going to cave in and let you marry my son? I guess you really were being a bit arrogant. <laughs> Today was literally supposed to be the first time that you and I were going to meet, Donna. I thought that you'd be more welcoming and kind. Why do you hate me so much? Well, you know, at a glance, I can already guess what kind of characteristics you have as a person. It's very obvious to me what your personality is like, Tilly. Okay, well, considering you're only meeting me for the first time today, it's very bold of you to say something like that. So, what kind of person am I then, Donna? Hmm, how am I going to put this so that you understand... You're basically just a hopeless sewer rat who gets close to men so that you can take their money, huh? Are you for real? Are you saying that I only go after men who have a lot of money? What on earth are you trying to say, Donna? Have you lost your mind? Excuse me, I've not lost my mind at all. How dare you be so rude to me, you piece of filth? I'm just cutting out all the roundabout ways to tell you who you are. So are you trying to tell me that you had no idea that my son is quite a rich man that has his own company? Do you live in that much of a hole, or are you lying? Of course I know that about him, but it's not the most important thing to know when it comes to our relationship. But yes, Isaac told me about his successes. Do you seriously think that I approached Isaac because I knew that he has a huge pot of gold sitting in his bank account? Are you kidding me about being a gold digger? Have you actually thought that maybe I love Isaac very much and that I want to be his partner for the rest of my life? I want to marry him with all my heart. Ah, okay. Well, there's no need for you to start spreading rumors when that's not the truth at all. <laughs> I know exactly what you're trying to do here. Isaac is going to be the president of our company in the future and you want to sneak in there and take it away from him. You're just aiming to be the new CEO's wife, right? So you're planning on taking the company's money and our family assets for yourself, am I right? I already know how sneaky you are. Don't try to deny it. I hate to break it to you, sweetheart, but your plan isn't going to go the way that you want it to. That's why I'm trying to help my son avoid your actions. Well, if you must know that taking money was never my intention at all... I don't know where you got this crazy idea from, but that is something I would never do to my partner. All I want to happen between Isaac and I is for us to be happy and have an amazing adventure with our relationship and our future. Do you not understand that? What the heck are you talking about, Tilly? What's all that crap supposed to tell me? <laughs> do you really think it's okay to try to appeal to someone's emotions? You know that I can never be fooled like that. I've lived a pretty long life now, and I know what fools like you do. I've said it many times before. If we look towards the future, Isaac will be carrying all the weight of the company on his shoulders. You know that, right? Because he doesn't need some gold digger bringing him down more. 
Yes, I'm very aware of his circumstances, Donna. I've known that since I've started dating him, and I am 100% going to support him in any way I can. Oh yeah, by trying to take all his money, right? I know that's all you want from him. I can see right through your lies, and you thought I would let my son marry a lowlife like you? I'm no lowlife, and I wish you would just listen to what I'm trying to say about how much Isaac means to me. I know your company's a large one. I get that you're protecting it. And I've also learned that you've lived a very nice and flashy lifestyle. But even though you're in the upper class, there's no need to treat people like dirt. There's no point calling me a low life or a poor person as you really don't know a lot about me and my history. I don't think it's good to say things like that. At least Isaac doesn't see me this way. I don't know where you got all your crazy assumptions about me from, but it's not fair to talk to me like this. Well, I hate to break it to you and Isaac, but he's always been the child that doesn't know how to read people. He lacks that trait, even though I've got a very good read of how people like you act. I already know that you're conniving and that you're going to take Isaac for all he's worth and waste the money on yourself. He's too blind to see past your lies. If he's being swayed by such a poor person about how he runs his life, then he's got a long way to go before he does anything decent with the company and the life he leads. <laughs> Are you seriously kidding me right now? Were you not listening to a word I was saying before about myself? You are such a terrible human being for saying such things. Oh, boo-hoo, cry me a river, sweetheart. You shouldn't have tried to convince me that you loved my son when I already knew your plans. Oh, shut up. You need to be told your place in society. So that's it? You're not going to listen to me or try to meet up with me to get to know me? You're not even going to recognize that Isaac and I are really happy and want to be together? I get no blessing from you? There's absolutely no way that I'd ever bless a marriage between my super successful son and this street rat. It's not happening, so get used to it. <laughs> Besides, since Isaac failed to find a decent woman to marry and support him with the company, I'm just going to have to do everything myself. I'm going to decide who he marries. So what if I slapped you across the face and made you leave? You should have more guts than that to face me. You should have come up with a better lie than you did. Now, you really know your position. You're to leave my son alone and never come near me ever again, you poor disgusting rat. I'll make sure that his next wife is more suitable for him. <laughs> um, Tilly, are you there? I've been trying to call and text you for a while now. I saw that you were online, so I'm just trying to make sure if you're okay. Oh, Isaac, hi. Um, yeah, I feel a little bit better now. I've just arrived at my house, and I just needed a break from my phone for a bit. I've calmed down a little. Tilly, I really wanted to say how sorry I am about what happened back at my parents' house. I really couldn't believe my mom. I don't know why she did what she did. I don't know what's gotten into her either, but she really hates me, Isaac. She contacted me just before and told me to not come by the house again. Ugh, my mom. Unfortunately, she always says stuff like that whenever she feels uncertain about a person. I guess you could say that she's a bit possessive. She really can't accept it if I decide on something without her. Okay, she's not super possessive, but she can't stand it when she doesn't get what she wants. I've been used to her being like this for quite a while now, especially since I've become more of an adult and making my own decisions. I never thought she'd act like that. Yeah, I can see why you'd say things like that about her. It sums her up quite nicely. I was really shocked when all that crap went down, Isaac. Tilly, I know how much this is affecting you, but I still do want to wish you all the happiness in the world. I don't know how we're going to overcome her. Wait a minute. What did you just say? What's brought this on all of a sudden? You're not trying to say what I think you're going to say to me right now, are you? Well, it's just... You know, you probably don't want to marry me after all that just happened to you. If that's the case, I just want you to be honest about it to me. Oh, 
Isaac, I I've got a feeling that you've got the wrong idea here. It's been a dream of mine since I met you to actually marry you and be with you through everything we get thrown at. But Tilly, I, I don't understand. You did realize what my mother was like, right? Why are you going so far as to say something so nice to me right now? But I'm your partner, and you're a super important person to me, Isaac. Of course I'm being brutally honest when I say that I love you so much and want to be with you. You actually want to be with me even though my family was basically super horrible to you? What did I even do to make you feel this way still? Well, when I was having trouble at work, you were always there for me and always stood up for me. Do you remember how many times you saved me from stress and our peers? There was no one else that was by my side like you were, Isaac. You understood what was happening was so wrong and you helped me get through the tough times. But I don't see how I was on your side, though, Tilly. I couldn't really offer a lot of useful advice without getting you fired somehow. I don't think I helped a lot, to be honest. No, I think you underestimate how much you did for me. I really thought that the company would make me leave, but you were always there to back me up. That was enough for me. That simply can't be true. I was the one who was saved by you, you kept me so calm and focused when I was getting crap from work and family life. I've always lived my life looking up to my parents and wondering if anything I do would be good enough for them. I've always been scared to divert anything to get what I wanted. But you, Tilly, you always followed through with what was right and what was best for you. You did what you wanted to do. That's how you live your life and you give me courage because of that. Wow, that's so sweet of you to say, Isaac. I really appreciate you telling me that. I think that we have the best chemistry when it comes to us being together for each other. I really think so too, Tilly. But maybe that's why we can't be together right now. Because I don't want you being treated like this by my mom. It shouldn't be happening this way. Yeah, you've got a point. I do feel the same way. I shouldn't be treated like dirt. I'm better than that. I don't know what your mom's problem is with me when she barely knows me. If we want to deal with this issue and actually try to do something about it before things get worse, let's talk more about what's going to happen from now on. Yeah, you're right. The best thing to do is to communicate how things can get fixed. I'm very down to openly talk about this in person. Let's do that. So Donna, I'm messaging you because I still want us to try and get along. I think we got off on the wrong foot. Can we just start this all over again, please? What makes you think I want to do anything like that, huh? Do you really think that I'm gullible to fall for this request, you pathetic woman? Must you seriously talk to me like this when we're both adults? Like I told you the last time we met Donna, Isaac and I love each other very much and want to get married. I wanted to ask you once again because maybe you might have had a change of heart. So will you please give us your blessing for this marriage? Excuse me, are you trying to make me say something that I really don't want for my son and my family? Are you still going on about getting my blessing? Oh, you're super persistent, aren't you? Why are you being so desperate when it comes to getting my approval of this marriage, huh? Do you love money that much that you want to betray this entire family? Um, you're not even trying to listen to me. There are many great things about Isaac that has nothing to do with him making lots of money for the family company. You know what? You're twisting everything I say. It seems like you're the one who's saying that your son has nothing good to offer but money. Did you hear that loud and clear, Donna? Well, that's actually true. That child of mine was not particularly good at studying, nor is he super good looking like other wealthy men in this country. The only thing I really like about my son is that he's obedient. I don't think there's anything else that's good about Isaac. <laughs> Just that he doesn't disobey me. <laughs> wow, this has got to be some sort of sick joke, right? How can you say something so horrible about your own son? It makes no sense to me at all. I'm just going to pretend that I didn't hear anything you just said to me. Isaac would be super sad to know that his mother doesn't like anything about him. 
Well, luckily for you, Tilly, you don't need to worry about how he feels about it so much. I told you what he's like, but you just won't listen. <laughs> I told him this as well. You've got to be kidding me. Donna, please tell me that you didn't seriously just tell your own son that he's not anything but obedient. That would tear him apart. Of course I told him. I can say whatever I like to my own flesh and blood. I feel that Isaac lacked a lot of self-awareness and needed to know about it. We explained to him to do as we told him. I thought that if he didn't know these things about himself, then he would never understand what it's like to have him as a son. <laughs> I had a right to tell him that since I'm his mother. You're the worst mother in the world now that you've done that. Have you never thought about how he feels when he hears bad things about himself from his own mother? Well, if you must know, you stupid little girl, this is an educational policy in our home. He needs to learn about the things that make him hopeless so he can do better. In order to make the company bigger, he needs to know more things about himself and how he can better himself for our family's sake. He needs to understand that. Also, I thought I would let you know that his new marriage partner has been chosen and it's been decided that they'll get married instead. I decided on a lovely woman from the accounting department in our company would be a suitable candidate for being Isaac's wife. She's got a good head on her shoulders, she's beautiful and smart and ten times better than you'll ever be. I want her and Isaac to marry each other. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now just hold on a minute there. What the heck? This is the 21st century. Isaac is a grown man and can decide on his own wife. How can you do such a selfish thing to him? You can't do this to your own son. He should be able to marry who he loves. Does he even know about this? Well, before you rudely interrupted me and thought it would be fine to ask for my blessing over a text message, I was planning to talk to him, yes. Of course, I really do think that he'll do what I say. I know he doesn't want the wrath of me if he doesn't do what I say to him. I control his life. This is insane, Donna, and you know it. You can't do this when he's my fiancé. You can't do this to him or me. Your tyranny is unacceptable, and I'll never forgive you for this. Oh, don't be so stupid, you ugly lowlife. Since when do I need to apologize for any of this? This is how my family has done things for generations, and I don't plan on stopping now. But what would you know? I bet you don't even have any traditions like we do. A poor peasant like you would never understand the way that the upper class do things. Mm. I don't know what kind of family would have such a stupid tradition in controlling what their children do, and I really don't want to know the details. It's just sick. Anyway, back to answering your question from earlier, Tilly. There's no way that I'll ever bless your marriage with my son, so you can forget about it and move on from him. <laughs> You're making a huge mistake, Donna. You better watch what you say and do next, otherwise things might take a turn for the worst for your family. Don't you think you'll regret this? Excuse me, do you really think I've ever had a regret in my life when it comes to making decisions? You really need to shut up and get out of my sight, you piece of trash! <laughs> Hey, what the heck is going on here, Tilly? What on earth have you done? How could you do something like this without my say-so, you evil little cow? Huh? Is that you, Donna? Oh, sorry. I was busy and away from my phone. I wasn't paying attention to your messages. Um, what are you talking about? What's happened? Is it exactly true that you're having a wedding ceremony with Isaac? This is some kind of sick joke. Y you better just be messing with me because I never gave you permission to do this. Huh? I'm not entirely sure what you're on about, Donna. <laughs> Did you actually hear that from somewhere? <laughs> I didn't really care if you found out or not. Well, I'm telling you that a friend of mine was telling me that they saw you in fancy clothes and it sounded like you were going to get married. Why on earth are you doing this on your own? Don't you remember what I said to you, Tilly? We literally just had this conversation not so long ago. Didn't I tell you that I wasn't going to bless your marriage and that you couldn't be together? Well, yes, you did say those things, but did you think that we were actually going to listen to you? It was honestly better for us to just ignore your opinion about our relationship. <laughs> 
We knew you weren't going to change your mind, so after all the discussions we had, we just decided to leave you out of things and we got married ourselves. Besides, you're a bit late when it comes to the decision. It's already been made. It's not like there's anything you can do about it now. <laughs> So if you've already organized a wedding ceremony and all that other crap that couples do, does that mean that you're legally married to each other? Well, yes, that's what a wedding is for. To show everyone that we're legally bound together by being married to each other. We've already handed in the marriage certificate to the courthouse. So now that we've done that, I can now confirm that we're already officially husband and wife. You're a bit late to the party, but that's okay. <laughs> Do you have any idea how much you have ruined my plans for my son? You went behind my back and betrayed me. You knew that I was setting up Isaac's marriage to someone else, right? Of course I knew that, but I wasn't going to let you get away with it, considering that it's Isaac's decision to determine who he marries. He wanted to marry me, so yes, we didn't say a word to you. Did you really think that I was going to give up on Isaac that easily, Donna? I love Isaac, and we wanted to get married. It was good, because you had no idea of our plan. <laughs> we just let you go and make all these decisions so that you were distracted from what we wanted to do. We had nothing to do with what you were trying to dictate to Isaac. This is unbelievable. I knew you were a conniving little rat. I knew you were up to something terrible. How dare you do this without my say-so? Oh, this is simply not allowed. Well, I don't know what else to say apart from we're husband and wife now and you need to stop with these outrageous plans for your son. He can make his life the way he wants it. Just stop with all the controlling and being so hateful towards me when you don't even know me. If you really want to, you can attend the ceremony, okay? Are you kidding me right now? After you both stabbed me in the back, I'll do no such thing. I would never attend your stupid wedding ceremony. Now that you've both unfortunately married to each other, you need to go back down to the courthouse and file for divorce. Even though it's bad to divorce, it'll be better than being married to a poor peasant. Are you being serious right now? You're wanting us to get a divorce when we just said our I do's and confirmed our marriage? There's no way either of us are doing that. I knew you'd turn around and say something of that sort. I guess I've got no choice but to go down there and file them myself on your behalf. I can do that. I'm Isaac's mother, after all. As you know, Isaac has been trained to obey any command I give him, and he knows I've got the power to do this, and you can't stop me. <laughs> he knows I hate you and that you're doing this, so I'm telling you now that I'll make the divorce final, and I'll hand in the papers right away. You'll never get his money. Are you seriously just doing this because this is what you want? What about what Isaac wants? Don't you ever listen to his wants and needs? No wonder we didn't tell you about this. Have you even for a second considered Isaac's feelings or his future at all? Don't you want him to be happy with someone he loves? What's your problem, lady? Of course I've thought about it. I'm his mother and I know what's best for him. And it's certainly not you, you lowlife. I'm his parent, so I care about his happiness first and foremost. I don't see you doing that at all. All you're doing is dictating to him. What kind of a so-called supportive parent is that, Donna? You're literally ruining his future by being like this. Shut up, you absolute piece of trash, human being. I'm not going to sit there and listen to any of your opinions about me. If I tell Isaac to divorce you, he should obey completely. All you're making me do right now is cause an argument, and it's making me waste time when I should be going to the courthouse. If you do any more stupid things, you'll live to regret it. Well, if Isaac really wants to divorce and not ever want to see me ever again, I guess there's nothing that I can really do about it. I'll have no choice but to let him go. Oh my god, you're finally seeing sense. Thank you. If you just fulfill this wish, everything will be over in just under ten minutes. Then we can finally have you out of our lives. Okay, I need to get going so that we can all get this over with. I'll go get the divorce papers from the courthouse now and bring them over for both of you to sign. <laughs> Isaac, you need to reply to me right now. Why did you decide to get married without telling me? How could you do this to your own mother? Oh, it doesn't make any sense. 
Uh, Mom, isn't it obvious? But also, I'm pretty sure I told you about it. I'm sure it was mentioned maybe once or twice. Weren't you there when I announced to the family I was marrying Tilly? But don't you remember me telling you that I don't approve of this marriage? You realized I never gave you my blessing, right? How could you be so stupid to marry a street rat? But what you don't seem to get, Mom, is that we love each other so much. What's so difficult for you to understand? You might have an opinion on it, but it doesn't mean I'm going to listen to it. What the heck did you just say to me? How dare you talk back to your own mother in that sort of way? Don't you know that you're the next president of the company? Don't you get that you've got a reputation to uphold when it comes to how our family looks to the public? Don't you understand how important your position is going to be in this company? Well, yes, I get that I'll be the next company president, but so what? What's that got to do with me getting married to Tilly, huh? What's the big deal in marrying her? Oh, you're so stupid when it comes to finding a good woman. Why do you think I've had to get involved with all the relationships you've had over the years? You've not got a good eye when it comes to choosing a good partner for this company and for yourself. I'll have to be the one who chooses who you marry, all right? You're to get rid of that piece of trash and never have anything to do with her ever again. You shouldn't have done this without my permission. You're to divorce her immediately. Are you being serious right now, Mom? Do you really think I'm going to turn around to do that to the love of my life? There's no way that I can do that to her. Tilly is the right person for me, and she's the most important person to ever exist in my life. I'm not stabbing her in the back by separating from her. Well, that's just too bad, Isaac. You're literally the only one in this family who thinks that way. You're obviously being brainwashed by her. How could you let this happen to yourself? Excuse me? What did you just say about my wife? Do you seriously think that she's brainwashing me into making decisions? She's the only person who lets me make decisions for myself. I guess I have no choice but to tell you what kind of person that poor peasant is, then. She's exactly what I thought that she would be when it comes to weaseling her way into this family. <laughs> You're making no sense right now. What do you mean that's what you thought? Are you really making assumptions about someone you barely know? Don't you get what she's trying to do to you, Isaac? She's wanted to get really close to you because she's just a gold-digging thief. Don't you think she is? She only sees you as a source of money, her personal bank account. Her goal was to become the CEO's wife and get her hands on our family fortune. She makes it so obvious, but you're too blind to see that. I seem to be the only one who knows what she's up to. That's why I slapped her across the face and chased her out of the house. I have had to go to so many extremes so that everyone knew what she was doing was really wrong and that I was protecting us from her. How can you not understand that, Isaac? Mom, you've gone way too far this time. This is absolutely ridiculous. I think we all know that's a lie. You hardly know her. I do. She's not like that at all. Please tell me you didn't just say that to me, Isaac. Have you lost your mind or something? Do you seriously not believe what your own mother is telling you? There's no way I can believe anything you're telling me anymore. Do you really think Tilly only started going out with me because I had a lot of money? You have no idea what she does for a job, do you? She's literally a manager of a company, and it's actually a very well-known company, Mom. You think she's a gold digger? Give me a break, Mom. You're off your rocker. You probably don't believe that a woman can be a leader of a company, do you? You didn't think that some poor person like her actually runs a successful company, huh? You're so quick to judge people, Mom. It makes me sick and ashamed to be related to you. Tilly earns up to $500,000 a year in her position. If anything, I feel like I'm the gold digger since her earnings are quite a bit higher than mine. What you're saying is a downright lie about her. Whoa, now, just wait a minute. What the heck did you just say? 
Are you telling me that Tilly is some big hotshot boss? Is this for real? Oh, she doesn't even look like she could manage anyone. Well, it's true. She's a fine manager and treats people with respect and kindness. That's what makes her an even better leader. Maybe you just don't see that. What I can't understand is how ignorant you were of her when I brought her over to the house. Why didn't you ask her what she did for a living? But, oh, but how can this be? I thought that I had a good read on that vile woman. Is what you're saying actually true, or is she just lying to you? You can be easily manipulated, Isaac. Would you just shut up, Mom? Everything that comes out of that mouth of yours is disrespectful and disgusting. I'm so glad that I haven't turned out like you, Mom. If you must know, Tilly is an irreplaceable woman to me. And you trying to force me to divorce her is the most cruelest thing you've ever tried to do to me. The moment that you raised a hand to my wife and used every single word that you said against her, I felt nothing but disgust and disappointment from you, Mom. You're the worst mother on the planet, and Tilly has done nothing but be kind to you, because that's just in her nature. She's really tried with you, but she's so exhausted. Come to think of it, I'm exhausted of having these fights and conversations with you, Mom. All you do is create chaos, and I've had enough of this crap. How dare you speak to me like that? All I'm trying to do is protect you from women like her. She's nothing but bad news, and you know it. Open your eyes, Isaac. They are open, Mom. I've never seen so clearly in my entire life. Tilly's been the one to help me see that there are good people in this world, since you've always ruined everything for me. I have done nothing of the sort. How dare you speak badly of your own mother? I've put food on your plate, bathed you, and put clothes on you so you look suitable for all occasions. Have you actually forgotten all the good things I've done for you? Does none of that count anymore? Don't you think you should thank me for getting you to where you are today? The only person I should be thanking is myself for finally being able to leave your grasp, to do my own thing and to be able to be with the one I love, not the person you chose for me. Do you really think an arranged marriage was going to stop me from being with Tilly? She's the only one who understands what I've been through and stood by my side through thick and thin. Why would I ever marry a stranger, Mom? If that was what you wanted, then your mind is completely messed up. You're delusional, and I'm not letting you control me anymore. I thought the best thing for me to do was to get married to the love of my life, grow the company more, and then give back to the people who make the company successful. It was never just our family who made this company great. It was the people that worked for us that made it fantastic. Tilly helped me see that, and she's an amazing person. Oh, stop talking about that piece of filth. It's making my ears bleed. The company would not exist without this family. You're supposed to put your family in the company first. All you're being is selfish. Wow, Mom. You really don't know me at all, do you? That's it. I'm done with this conversation. And having a relationship with you. You make me feel sick to my stomach. I can't even stand to be in your presence. I don't want to ever feel this way ever again. I don't need you anymore, Mom. You're nothing but an evil witch. You're nothing without me, Isaac. You wouldn't have succeeded if it weren't for me. You can't walk away from this family. If you do, you'll regret it immediately. I don't think so, Mom. I've got everything I need. My little house, my wife, and happiness. Money was never the most important thing, and pleasing you certainly wasn't either. From now on, I'm going to live my life the way that I want to. You can't stop me anymore, Mom. You've always made me feel horrible about myself. Not anymore. You can't walk away from me. You can't do this to me. I am your mother, and you're to get back here and obey my orders. You're to divorce that woman and marry this lovely woman I've paired you up with. 
You can go tell her I'm not interested. I'm married and happy with Tilly. Good luck with that part, Mom. I never want to hear from you ever again. Goodbye, Donna. No, wait. You can't do this to your own flesh and blood. Families are supposed to stick together. You can't just cut me out of your life. Get back here. Don't ignore me. Please, Isaac, don't do this to your dear old mother. I can't handle it. Please, I need my son. I want to make sure that you'll succeed. Wait, oh, come back. In the end, it sounded like Donna was having some financial trouble when it came to her company. She ended up asking for a loan from Tilly since she found out that she's a high-paid manager. Since Tilly didn't want to give her a loan, Donna's company went bankrupt six months later. Fearing that she would end up having a lot of debt, she quickly divorced Isaac's father. After that, she returned to her parents' house and tried to live under their protection. But apparently her parents knew how she was treating their grandson, Isaac. They rejected her pleas and she was begging on her knees for them to help her. They also found out the true reason why she had married her husband. They cut her off when they found out her true plan. She was always blaming Tilly for being a gold digger, but it was really Donna who was one. She married her husband so as she wanted to monopolize her husband's earnings and keep it for herself to buy nice and shiny things. It seems like Donna didn't expect her parents would cut her off and she felt like she was being strangled by them. With nowhere to go, Donna had no choice but to rent a super rundown and cheap apartment. She also had to get a part-time job to make ends meet. But with all that, she was still unable to change her wasteful money habits that she developed as a CEO's wife. She continued to buy luxury brands that were more than her paycheck. Now she's drowning in debt and unable to pay it back. She's spending her days running away from debt collectors. No one knows where she is or what she's doing. It looks like no one is there for her, but that's her own doing. Tilly and Isaac were able to have a wonderful day at their wedding. They got everyone's blessings on their special day. They were both determined to build a happy family and life together. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to see more content like this.